Okay, so we're going to review uh, the uh, two-way, and then we're going to talk about a three-way factorial design. So here's a, another example of um, a two-way design. It says, uh, survey of cover models on popular magazines, kind of the number of people in minority groups who are on the covers of different types of magazines. The table shows the percentage of minority cover models in uh, magazines. It says, what are the IVs and DVs, and visually inspect for main effects and interactions. And that, so here we have magazine types, uh, entertainment, fashion, sports, and here's the mean. Then we have readers, teen readers and adult readers. You know, people aren't assigned to condition here. We're just looking at different kinds of magazines, are they, to, and uh, looking at the percentage of people who are minorities in the, the, first, the front page. So for teen readers magazines for entertainment, 40% of the, the um, cover models are minorities. Fashion, 30%. Sports, 25%. For adults, 38% are of the entertainment covers are minorities. 5% for fashion and 24% uh, for sports. Okay, what are the IVs? Well, we have kind of magazine and we have kind of reader. There are two independent variables, and this would be a three by to design. Visually inspect for main effects and interactions. So, whoops. So, um, main effects, we're going to ignore um, the top row and, I mean, the, the columns, and we're just going to go for the two rows. 31 and 32 percent versus 22 percent. That's a, about 10 percent. That's a pretty good difference. Looks like there's a main effect here. And then we got 39, 17 and a half, and 24 for kind of magazine. So, it looks like there's a main effect there. Interaction, you're talking about the difference of differences. So if we look, here's 2%, here's 25%, here's 1%. This is, this is pretty different than these other two. Okay, So it looks like there's an interaction between the kind of readers magazine and the percentage of uh, minorities on the cover. OK. Um, we just talked about this. Is there a difference of differences? Yes. Oh, here it is. 2%, 25%, 1%. That's what I just said. All right. Uh, there's a couple of different ways we could um, illustrate this with uh, bar graphs. So we can go entertainment, and then we can have the teen mags in uh, blue and the adult mags in red, and 40 versus 38, 30 versus 5, 25 versus 24 for the different kinds of magazines. Or we can organize it the other way around. So we can have the teen as the grouping, teen versus adult, and then we can have entertainment, fashion, and sports as separate bars. And um, either way, you can see there's this real discrepancy here in the difference between the bars, either this one compared to these two or this one compared to this one, which is you know your visual cue that there's an interaction going on. And we could also do this with a line graph. So here we have teen versus adult, and then we have a line going 30 to 5, and then 25, 24, and um, 40 versus 38. And you see that lack of parallelism here, again, is indicating that uh, we have an interaction. And here you see the, the other way of organizing the same information. So here we had three lines and two groupings. Here we have three groupings and two lines. It really doesn't matter whatever. Um, the, most people would do it this way. It seems easier to read. But um, it's not wrong to do it this way. It's whatever uh, is going to do the best job of communicating to your reader what's going on. The interaction is that lack of parallelism, parallelism is clear in either of these graphs. OK. Um, in a three-way design now, we're going to have three independent variables instead of two. So if we had uh, three independent variables with two levels each, we would have a two by two by two design. The number of cells would be two by two by two. So two times two is four times two is eight. If you have a completely crossed, I'm sorry, a completely be between groups factorial design and so many participants in each group, how many people do you have total? Okay, so here's the notation, three by two by two. Three by two is two independent variables, the first two. Um, Top example has three independent variables. The second example has two. So every time you see this x, which we read as by, 
that means there's a new independent variable. So one, two, three here, one, two here. The cells, so a cell is a treatment combination. And what you do in a factorial design is you typically have all the levels of each IV are crossed or appear with all the levels of each of the other independent variables. So what that means is you have to to find the total number of cells, you just multiply the number of levels of each variable together. So if it's a 3 by 2 design, 3 times 2 is 6. If it's a 3 by 2 by 2, 3 times 2 is 6 times 2 is 12. So there'd be 12 treatment combinations of 12 cells here. Here there would only be 6. And so you can see every time you add a new independent variable, if you're going to do one of these factorial designs, you're going to really increase the number of treatment combinations, and that means more cells, that means more people. So we're going to run out of time and energy pretty quickly after two or three independent variables. To find uh, people, if you remember from uh, the a little bit earlier, um, in a between or independent groups designs, the total number of people is going to be the number of cells times the number of people per cell. So if we have a two by two by two design with 20 people per cell, we're going to have eight cells and 20 people per cell, and that will need 160 people to run through our study. For uh, a repeated measure design, that is a, a within design, the total people is people per cell. So if we had a single factor study with four levels and 20 people, we'd need 20 people. And if we had a two by two by two design with 20 people uh, in a within design, we wanted 20 people per cell, we would need 20 people because each of those 20 people would go through every treatment combination. For the mixed designs for both between and in, within, the total people is between cells times people per cell. So uh, if we had a 2 by 2 by 2 with repeated measures on the last factor, 20 people per cell, we'd need 4, that's the first 2 times 20, or 80 people total. So in the um, completely between, we'd need 160. Completely within, we'd need 20. And the between and the last factor, we'd need 80. OK, so <clears throat> that's uh, calculating the number of people we would need for a study. How about the number of main effects and interactions? So the number of main effects is going to equal the number of independent variables that we have in our study. So here we have three independent variables. It's a two by two by two. So with three IVs, we're going to have three main effects to check. They may or may not be significant, but that's, that's how many we've got. You're going to have one uh, main effect per independent variable. Now the interactions will climb, the number of those will climb very steeply every time you add another independent variable. So with three independent variables, you're going to have all the possible two-way interactions. So 1 versus 2, 1 versus 3, 2 versus 3. That's um, 3. And then there's a three-way action uh, interaction, a 1 by versus 2 versus 3. So 1, 2, 3 uh, uh, interaction is also possible. So with three independent variables, you're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4 possible interactions. With two independent variables, you know, you just have one possible interaction, that one versus two. With uh, three independent variables, you know, you now have four. And if we added another independent variable, we'd have a whole lot. Okay. Um, and I'm going to show you what that three-way interaction would look like and how you know whether you have um, a three-way interaction. So let's see what I say. Okay. Uh, here's an example study. We want to know how people like their popcorn. We prepare popcorn with butter or with cheese. We prepare it on the so stove top or in a microwave. We sample children and we sample adults. Each person in our study will taste one batch of popcorn. We assign people, 10 people, randomly to each condition. We have them taste the popcorn and tell us how much they like it on a scale from 1, yuck, to 10. It's great. Okay, so what are our IVs? What's our dependent variable? What's the design? What's the total n? All right, so um, this is a study of how much people like popcorn. So the dependent variable is how much they like popcorn. And we're going to see 
different things about the popcorn and the people and see whether that matters in terms of how much they like it. So butter or cheese, that's our first independent variable. Stove top or in a microwave, that's our second independent variable. And then children and adults, well, that's our participant factor in this. So we can randomly assign children to one of these conditions, and we can randomly assign adults to one of these conditions. We want 10 people in each. So um, how many people are we going to need? Well, well, I'd say 10, 20, 30, 40. I'd say about 80 people is how many we need. And these are the average of the 10 people that, oh my, look at that. The adults like cheese on their, <laughs> on their stove top popcorn. And uh, they liked, uh, so did the children. They liked it a lot. So they put cheese on the stove top. I guess something's great about that. Mmm. Children like the microwave with the butter too. Okay. All right. So to get um, main effects, you know, we collapse across the other levels and we just get the mean. So adults, we take the average of these four, we get 5.13. Children, we take the average of these and we get 6.13. So there's, it's not that big a difference. It's, it's some, maybe it's significant. We have to do the statistical test to see for sure. Butter versus cheese. Cheese is uh, two points higher. Um, that's probably significant. That's a pretty good size difference. Stove top versus microwave. My goodness, people like microwave better. Well, there's no accounting for taste. And so um, this looks like it's a pretty big difference too. So there's looks like there's two main effects and maybe a third. So there's three possible, because we have three factors, right? And three independent variables, there are three possible main effects and it looks like at least two of them are going to be significant. So we looked at our main effects. Now what about two-way interactions? So well, what we can do is uh, collapse across our um, third variable to look at all the possible uh, two ways. So we can have a one by two, you know, and one by three and two by three, all those two two way interactions. So here we got um, the uh, topping and the cooking method, and we're looking to see whether there's an interaction here. And we got 5.75 versus 3.5 here, and then we got 3.5 versus 9.75 here. And if you find the difference here, it sure is going to be different than the difference here, which suggests that there's a pretty good interaction going on between the kind of topping and the kind of preparation. And here's the graph of that same uh, uh, outcome. So here we've got the butter. Um, and the cheese, so here's the topping, and then the cooking method, here's the microwave, and here's the stove top. And you can see you have a nice two-way interaction here. And you could um, look at the other, uh, the other possible interactions. So and we got microwave versus regular, and we got the children here, and we got the adults here. And here we got microwave versus regular, and here we got the children here and the adults here. So a three-way interaction is visible if the nature of the interaction changes across the two ways. So here we've got um, the children uh, versus adults and microwave versus regular. And we've got that in two conditions, the butter condition and the cheese condition. So the participants versus the cooking method, how much do they, you know, the children and the adults like the microwave versus regular with butter with cheese topping. And you can see the graphs are quite different. The nature of the outcome, you got an interaction here, but you don't have the interaction here. This is a nice parallel lines. So if the interaction effect is different in the different two ways, that means that the three way is, um, is there. So if, if, uh, we had this interaction here and we had the same interaction over here, then the two-way interaction would be significant, but not the three-way. But we have a, an interaction here and no interaction here, so we have a three-way interaction because the nature of the relationship changes depending on the condition that you're in. So that's how you tell if you have a, a, a three-way interaction in your factorial analysis of variance with three independent variables. Okay. So here we are to the comprehension questions. 
and I'm just going to walk through these with you. It says, Dr. Smith runs a 3 by 2 by 2 factorial ANOVA with 10 participants per cell. How many independent variables are there? One, two, three, four. Well, we got a three by two by two, and each time there's a number here, that means there's an independent variable. So we have one, two, three independent variables. So C is the correct answer. Dr. Smith runs a three by two by two factorial ANOVA with 10 participants per cell. How many possible interactions are there? Well, answer is one, two, three, four. Well, there's one versus two, there's one versus three, there's two versus three, and then there's one, two, three. So that's a total of four. Dr. Smith runs a three by two by two independent groups factorial ANOVA with 10 participants per cell. How many participants does he need? Three times two is six, times two is 12, times 10 is 120. So D is the correct answer. And thanks for watching. See you back in class.